Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Raj Shana. I am from University of Notre Dame and Electrical Engineering Department. I am fifth year grad student working under Professor Dev Deep Shana. And so our title is Subvolgement Transistors with Piezoelectric Gate Barriers. Since the previous talk was related to negative capacitance using ferroelectric material used as the gate insulator. And in this proposal, we are investigating the same, the effect of the negative capacitance by using piezoelectric material. And then you, this used as the gate barrier of transistors. So uh, these are the outlines. I've, uh, first, I will talk about the wh why do we need the low power electronic devices, power dissipation, and fed device and circuits. Then I will talk about a little bit about the existing ideas. Then our our no novel mechanism for for getting this negative capacitance in in piezoelectric material for sub 60 millivolt per decade fed design. And then I will co conclude my talk. So so in order to get this, I mean. Uh, the motivation is the power consumption. So the power consumption, it's in electronic devices, it's going like this. This is the power density evolution in the Intel processor. The, according to the smooth law, the scaling power, power consumption, it's, it exponentially increases. So it's just, it just goes, like, goes like that. The power consumption is still approaches the sun surface. It's six, 6 kilowatt per square centimeter. That's, of course, the beyond the cooling limit. So that's the motivate us to investigate explore the new device structure for getting the low power device and the this you, you can get the expression for power is the some sort of cv square f plus p off this is the dynamic power dissipation so the goal is this all this power density generates the large amount of heat in the system's ic and this actually the affects the computing performance so the idea is we we need the these energy efficient devices and that's the, our conventional transistor and insulator source drain and the gate control so in the vertical direction is the electrostatic the gate can control the electrostatic and the horizontal this is the carrier the transport over the channel and you can see the the band diagram this is just like and the conduction band approach so these are the fermi function represents the all the source and drain contacts so the thing is, this energy efficient device in literature, people have figured out it can only be limited by the, this subthreshold slope. So the subthreshold slope is kind of the, require the, the requirement of the minimum gate voltage to change the drain current per decades of the drain currents. And that's actually divided into two factors. One, one we call the body factor and another we call the uh, transport factor. And body factor is the, how the gate is uh, coupled to the channel. And this is the differential change of gate voltage with the internal surface potential here. And so, so our goal is to, uh, in order to get that 60 millivolt per decade, because this is the transport factor, the, that's the actually Boltzmann factor. It's come out from this fermi dirac carrier distribution tail. And so, so, so we need to modify the, either the transport factor or, or the electrostatic factor. So the transport factor, that is the pretty much good idea, is the tunnel fits or IMOS. And the, the body factor, that's actually the, the we are looking in the negative capacitance approach or internal voltage amplification approach. So the goal is how the subthreshold slope, steep slope, can reduce the power dissipation. That's you can understand is the just, just transfer curve. So here is the ideal switch, the subthreshold slope, just abrupt transition. And then the, uh, this Boltzmann limit the rate curve, 60 millivolt per decade. And uh, once you modify the steep, it's just going down the up the off-state current. And this high-performance scaling device, it can reduces the uh, static power dissipation. So which is automatically, again, uh, further voltage scaling. And so there was a, for this negative capacitance approach, the first proposal coming out from the Professor Salauddin and Professor Shukri Datta at the 2008 proposal, they used, the, they proposed if you, if you replace the conventional gate dielectric by using the ferroelectric material, it, this material can actually amplify the internal channel surface potential. And the idea is, this is the polarization versus electric field curve. And it's, it's actually, once you operate that regime, and you can get the, some sort of collective alignment of electric dipoles in the ferroelectric material, that can actually amplify the surface potential. So that's their, uh, their idea. So, uh, so, so, 
So this actually, I mean, we are investigating, is there any other way to get that negative capacitance effect? effect? So that's the idea we are here, we call the, the mechanism, it's a, we call the electrostriction. Electrostriction is the, I mean, the piezoelectric material. So once you make the two contacts, this is the, the electrostatic attractive force between these opposite charges. This, uh, this can exert the forces on the body of the piezoelectric layer. And once the physioelectric material, if it is compliant, then then there is a, these forces can generate the field induced deformation, or or it's the compressed the layer, it's a compressive strain, it can creates like there. So the the electrostriction actually, this field induced deformation creates the strain in the layer at at, at a time. So so this piezoelectric material, it's response in response to the electric field, and also it changes the internal property. So it's kind of active, BFs as an active layer. And, and we have drawn the charge field band diagram so we can understand all this, the uh, dipole induced polarization charge and the strain induced charge due to this uh, thickness modulation with uh, tuning with the applied voltage. And this is the field and the potential distribution. So I'm just calculating by, by using the basic electrostatic, just voltage drop across the piezoelectric layer, Gauss law. This electric field times the modulation of the thickness and substituting, uh, substituting that strain, this delta Tp divided by Tp and this is kind of, you can see as a Maxwell stress, the square of the polarization induced charges. And then uh, I came up with some sort of nonlinear charge equation. And then after that, uh, you can see this is the, uh, this is the figure, this, this negative capacitance approach based on this figure. So I can explain this figure. So there is I plot the three charge states versus voltage based on the previous um, charge equation. So, so this blue line is corresponding to the normal charge states. Just you, in, the, you increase the voltage and I am accumulating the charge on the uh, uh, two sides of the piezoelectric layer. So, uh, so once it is this sublinear behavior exists because, because of this electrostriction and once this charge the system reached at that point, then at that point this charge states is kind of bifurcates, bifurcates and this way and, and that way. So that's the actually clear indication of the negative capacitance because the slope is kind of negative. I'm getting the charges increasing that way, voltage is decreasing. So that's DQ, DV on this red and the blue curve. That's clearly the negative capacitance regime. And this, this critical voltage, so I'm, I'm, I'm applying the voltage, creating the strain, the material thickness is reducing. At this voltage, the, the restoring elastic force is going, is actually going to uh, equivalent to the electrostatic force. So, so, so that's why there is a charge state bifurcates. And based on this charge state, I calculate the capacitance. So you can clearly see that there is a one is a positive capacitance and other two, other two are the negative capacitance. So that's actually motivates to use as a active, active gate barriers of the stiff slope transistors. And then we use the transistor, this piezoelectric material thin layer. Of course, it is a, it's, it's less than one, one nanometer or less than one nanometer. We have to do that in order to get that effect. In, and then, and since the negative capacitance itself is an unstable regime, so, so we need some sort of another positive capacitance material in order to get the stable, thermodynamically stable. So that's how we call the semiconductor channel. And then I, uh, in order to calculate the surface potential, I'm actually modeling, uh, I have been taking, uh, taking the free energy function and you can see the elastic energy, then the electromechanical coupling part, then the pure elastic, electrostatic energy and the other part is the external electric field coupled to the internal polarization. And then um, I came up with some sort of surface potential equation with, with, with all the material parameters, this piezoelectric layer here, we use the ALN because we are three nitrate ALN. And then after that, I calculate the surface potential. It's clearly the change in surface potential. It's, it's amplified. And the body factor is, a, is the less than one. That's actually translates the 60 millivolt per decade hour. And after that, I use the, some sort of the conventional surface potential based model. And I showed there is a transfer curve. It clearly shows this 50 millivolt per decade. But that you, you can also reduce by using the, the piezoelectric material with high, with higher piezoelectric coefficients and lower elastic constant. So, but our model predicts like 
40 to 50 millivolt per decade in the range. And then I, I also calculate the, the common source characteristic or output characteristics. And I use the long channel model, model here, one, I mean one micron. So that's why we are getting the some lower current. But but you can boost up the, the on current as, as, as one milliamps per micron by using this 100 nanometer gate length. So I'll now I'm going to con uh, conclude my my talk, so we have clearly shown that this NDC, negative differential capacitance effect, in the thin piezoelectric layer just by using electric field induced electrostatic sun effect. And, and that's our motivates to use the, the active gate barrier of the transistor. And here, the electrostatic sun and piezoelectricity, that's the internally amplified the surface potential and, and, and also associated sub, sub 60 millivolt per decade. And I would thank the List program and our director, Professor Alan Swiver, and thank you for your attention. Hi. Um, so I would expect some his hysteresis in this kind of transistors. So in your simulations or even experiments, do you see any hysteresis? I mean, sim uh, simulation. I didn't. I mean, I did not include the his hysteresis. But I believe in negative capacitance, there should be some sort of hysteresis once the, this system has the bifurcates on the charge states. But I believe there is a, also experiment is going on Intel and they are going to present this year IDM, this piezoelectric gate barrier. And they have clearly seen the 40 millivolt per decade sub, the uh, subthreshold slope. How, and how it, much was that? 40 millivolt per decade. They have seen 40 millivolt. Yeah. Okay. But they have also seen the hysteresis is kind of 200 millivolt. I mean, this um, dual scan, the history is here. Yeah. So, I, uh, sorry, I didn't understand here. Uh, oh. I didn't fully understand where this uh, negative cap capacitance is coming from. Is it because of inverse piezo that you change the electric field, the layer thickness is changing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why because w w once we apply the electric field, there is a, um, the simultaneously, the thickness reduces, and the, within this thickness reduce at the same voltage, it can internally electric field also am amplified. So there is kind of positive feedback mechanism. So this positive feedback mechanism at some point leads to the, the negative capacitance because the strain creates the more charges. That's actually internally coming out. So in neg a negative capacitance means it's actually, uh, I mean, in order to get the same charge with as compared to uh, positive capacitance, you need the less voltage, or the capacitance is enhanced. That's the way you can think of it. Think way. But in hemp itself, this inverse piezo is like a problem of, uh, for reliability, because you know, it can move atoms you know, after long time. So Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. In, in, I mean, in, in 3 nitrate hemp, uh, that's maybe some sort of reliability issue. But I think, uh, in the steep slope idea, our, our goal is to get the negative capacitance. So that's the other way, other mechanism. You can get that negative capacitance. And once you get that, after that, even once you make the couple with some sort of other positive capacitance, so then the whole system becomes stable. So I believe in, in that way it can be removed, the reliability issue. Or, or maybe, yeah. Thank you. Right. In just time, it's a move on.